another recipe video. And um, I'm kind of nervous about this video and recipe because it is somewhat complicated to do. Um, but we are going to be replicating the Kind Bar recipe. And as you guys know, I love these, but they do get quite expensive. So I wanted to try to make these at home and see how it turns out. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and hopefully the recipe will turn out great. Otherwise it won't go live, but hopefully it will. If you're watching this video, it means that all went well. And yeah, so that's super exciting. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to rate the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will be talking to you guys very soon. Bye guys. I'm starting off with, with everything pre-divided and I have about a half a cup of puffed millet, then three-fourths of chopped walnuts, then three-fourths of peanuts, and then about two cups of raw almonds. So for this recipe, you're going to need a cup of dark chocolate chips. We're not going to be using that right now, but later on for the chocolate drizzling. And you're also going to need a tablespoon of flaxseed meal. If you didn't buy your nuts pre-roasted, you're going to have to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and roast them for about 10 minutes. So here I'm just adding my almonds, walnuts, and peanuts to this tray and I'm just mixing them in and really just roasting them for about 10 minutes is enough to bring out the flavor. Meanwhile, while the nuts are in the oven, I'm just going to be spraying the bowl and the tray because after you add the syrup, the nuts can be very hard to manage and this just makes them a lot easier and non-sticky. After I'm done adding all the roasted nuts to this bowl, I'm going to add the millet and also the flaxseed meal and mix everything very well. After your nut mixture is well blended in, you can set it aside and move on into making your syrup. So to make your syrup, you're going to need a two-quart saucepan and then you're going to add a half a cup of honey to it. adding your honey, you're going to add a third of a cup of brown rice syrup to the same saucepan. So the next step would be to add some sea salt into your syrup. I'm going to skip this step because my peanuts are actually already salted. And lastly, you're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla into your syrup. So you're going to place your saucepan over high to medium heat. And it's very important that you use a jelly type thermometer because it's crucial that you do not go over 260 degrees. Otherwise, your bars will be way too hard to chew. I recommend that you mix frequently and once it reaches a 260 degrees, I recommend that you pour it into the nut mixture and mix immediately. Once you pour your syrup into the nut mixture, you want to make sure that you fold in everything very quickly because the syrup does cool off very quickly and it becomes very hard to blend everything in. After everything is well folded in, you can then transfer it into your grease pan and you can use a base of a cup and make sure it's greased as well and that will just help you even things out. After your nut mixture is nicely even into one layer, you should wait 20 minutes for it to cool off and then flip it over and it's ready to cut. Now that I'm ready to cut, I'm using a pastry cutter 
to divide it into four big parts and then I'm going to further cut it into one inch bars. we're going to be moving on into melting our dark chocolate chips. I could have added the chocolate chips into the microwave for about 20 seconds, but I'm just trying to avoid the microwave. So I added boiling water to the bottom bowl, and then I added about a tablespoon of oil. This just helps with the consistency. And then I noticed that the bowl was too small because I am actually going to be dipping the bars into the melted chocolate. So as you see, here I'm just dipping in my bars into the melted dark chocolate and placing them on some wax paper. bars into the melted dark chocolate, it's time to move on into drizzling the dark chocolate on top of all the bars. dark chocolate cool off completely so it's nice and hard before you store them and if you want to speed this process up you can always put them inside your freezer. If you're planning to eat your bars on the go you can wrap them individually into wax paper and you can use a little bit of tape to make sure they're nice and tight. that I have here and the recipe I just made. So I feel like they look pretty similar. So let me take it out of here. So I think they look pretty good. Um, I feel like you, if you weren't comparing it, you probably wouldn't know which one was the original Kind Bar. But let's give it a taste try. You see on the bottom, they look pretty similar. This one's actually a little bit wider, but that's normal. You're gonna have ones that are wider and ones that are a little bit, um, you know, more narrow. But I'm gonna try this one. Okay, so now I'm gonna give this one a try. So this one's the original Kind Bar, and this one's the one I made. Um, I feel like taste-wise, they're pretty similar. I would say this one's a little bit nuttier. Hey guys, so let me know what you thought of the video and also let me know if you try this recipe and tag me in your pictures because I want to see how your um, kind bars at home turned out. I'm really happy um, how the, they turned out. I feel like it's an amazing recipe 
definitely took longer because I was filming, but I feel like next time I do this, it's going to be so much quicker and so much easier. Okay, so thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and I will be talking to you very soon. Bye, guys.